You were so willing to do this, right? I mean, at 2-0, and you could easily see, like, hey, man, sorry, you had your chance. But all along, you said, no, he's putting in work. Let's do it again. So why were you so open to this? Oh, man, it's just uh, it's the biggest fight I can do right now. You know, everyone wants to see it, right? And that's that's it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and that, that's what it is. He was, uh, you know, obviously, uh, or, or I'll give him credit. You know, he was stubborn. He goes, ain't no one taking that number one contender spot from me. That's, that's what he did. He stood there and took out all the guys and... Didn't let the, them have a shot at me, so now he gets a shot. Good on him. You know, that's exactly what I would do in the same situation. So uh, and now he's uh, obviously getting credited with a, a, th a third chance. So uh, he, he's done his, uh, what he was meant to do, so good on him. Talk about your preparation for this, right? I mean, you are 2-0 and against him, right? So, I mean, do you, do you feel there's a need to make adjustments in the lead-up, or is it like, hey, no, we, we've been in there for 10 rounds. We know what this guy has. We know the riddle. Oh, there's always going to be adjustments. I don't think I need to change, like, uh, too much, right? Yeah, that's there we go. Cheers. <laughs> Good lad. Now it's, now it's proper. There we go. Can we start a little questions again? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, man, I think uh, obviously you need a, there's going to be different strategies, uh, you know, and how we approach it. There's going to be uh, things that we want to know what he's going to do, but at the same time, you know, my style and, and where I'm at right now uh, will will definitely uh, be enough to, to, to deal with whatever challenges come forward. But I'm expecting Max to maybe even switch things up. Um, I'm still expecting that chess match and strategy and all that type, type of stuff. So um, I need to be on and uh, I will be on uh, fight night. Ten rounds with a guy. I mean, does that make preparation for this fight easier or more difficult? I mean, you know, I had ten rounds with a guy. I mean, if you watch from the first to the second fight, Two different fighters, you know, and from the second to this fight is going to be different fighters again. But I feel good. I feel great. I feel on. I got to spend 15 minutes with this guy, 10 rounds with this guy. I've been saying it all week, man. We, <laughs> he has to be blessed if we go above three. I can't wait. I mean, you've been in nothing but big fights for years now, right? But, I mean, the circumstances around this one, the trilogy, um, you know, kind of what's at stake. I mean, does this, does this feel like a, a different moment for you or an, a more important moment than maybe some of your other fights? Uh, this legacy. It's a legacy fight, 100%. You know, as you said, uh, you guys all know what pound for pound ranking he is. You guys know what pound for pound ranking I am. And we're on the, hopper, we're on the, the higher end of the pound for pound ranks, you know, and, and these don't happen in, in the past decade, you know. I mean, it did only once come to mind, and that's DC and Jones. So this is a legacy fight. This is huge in every way. Not, not, to be honest, I really, you know, like people calling us the main event of this card, you know, and that's saying a lot. That's saying a lot about this fight, so that's what it is. Are you expecting more? Desperation might be the wrong word, but like aggression. I mean, like he knows, like, this is it. Yes, he worked back here, but it's probably not going to happen again. So are you expecting that out of him? Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I think he's uh, going to still fight the fight he has to fight to try and win. Uh, he knows it's not going to be an easy task, so uh, you know he'll he'll definitely uh, you know try and find uh, the right way to win. But uh, at the same time, he's a gamer, man. So you know he's going to bring it. That's a part of his style. You know he wants to overwhelm people with uh, mentally and physically. He wants to get in, get in your head and, and come forward. So you know that's always going to be a part of his strategy. You know I don't think he's going to sit back and, and wait or anything like that. So. Um, you know, I, I think he, he, he will have uh, some things and some strategies going into this, but we're going to probably see the same Max. He's going to come forward and want to put hands on me, and, and I ain't going to, you know, you won't see a backward step from me. So it's going to make for a fun fight, a uh, chess match, very exciting, high pace, and let's do it. Does this have to be a finish? I mean, given how close the other fights were and how the judges kind of broke your heart a little bit, I mean, do you feel like I got to finish this fight? We see what happens, you know. You know, at the end of the day, it is what it was. You know, you know, cry over spilt milk, like you said. The first two fights, even the second fight, you know, Dana White was, Dana White said what he said. About, about half of the UFC roster said what they said. So, at the end of the day, you know, I, I wasn't trying to add no fuel to the fire, you know. He just, he let that, he let it go, he move on, and we did what we did, we're here now. Nice. Last thing for me, I know you got to focus on Saturday night and getting that win, but where does this rivalry go? I mean, do we go four? Do we go five? Like, what has to do to, to put an end to this? Uh, we see what happens, you know. First things first is getting the job done on Saturday. Uh, my name ain't Dana White, as you know. It ain't Sean Shelby, McMainer, Hunter Campbell. I don't meet with these guys on Tuesdays, so that's their job. You know, I'm no matchmaker. I'm a fighter. Whatever they want to do, we want to do. You know, there's a lot of history in a weight class above me that I have, you know, and... I got a history with the guy who I consider stood the champ there. You know, I, I'm a short list for Connor. You know, and there's a bunch of dream matchups that fans want to see at 55 for me. So 
we'll see what happens. But first thing first, I just got my full attention and I can't wait to go out there and show the world why I'm one of the best to do, ever do this and to ever be in this game. Love it. Last thing for me, uh, you know, obviously you focus on Saturday, but, you know, get the win here. Is, is the work done at 145? Or is there more work to be done? Or is it time to start looking at, you know, other options? Oh, man, the work's not done. You know, we've, we've got a stacked division. Like, we've got a lot of people uh, coming. Maybe, uh, maybe we have to, f you know, sit and wait a little bit. And that's why you always got other options too. You know, wherever, uh, wherever there's a double champ or whatever it is, you know, big fights that, you know, because, again, I don't want to just give people a, a title shot for the sake of it. If there's injuries and someone has to replace, all right, it makes sense. But then just giving someone that's ranked further down for no reason, you know, I feel like uh, you need to take that number one spot, like Max did, um, and then you, you'll get that shot. You know, it's been pretty clear from day one. Uh, but my work's definitely not done at featherweight. You know, you've got a bunch of killers uh, coming through, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, you've got Josh Emmett who just come off a, uh, a fight. You know, your Caters, your Year Rodriguez are fighting uh, Ortega. So that's that's going to be big. Arnold Allens. Um, you know, but there's plenty of guys. There's plenty of uh, killers coming through. They're just not there yet. But, I mean, you know, while I'm keeping busy with, with this, you know, with, 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 you know, who knows? In a couple of months, we might have a, a clear, clear guy that everyone wants to see. So... I'll be, I'll be keen to bring that on, but you know, we'll see what op options are after this fight. Max, back here to your left. There's been a lot of talk about fire, like Habib Nurmagomedov saying he thinks Volkanovski has more fire than you heading into that. Yeah. What do you think he means by that? Because you seem pretty fired up right now, and you've certainly shown a lot of fire in your last two yeah. performances. I mean, what I think Habib means, I think... Alex should be happy. He got a fan watching his cooking shows. That's probably the fire he's talking about, you know. So, at the end of the day, I'm playing video games, so I guess you can't really see the fire. I mean, I scream when my guys and my teammates screw up or when I scream up, and that's pretty fire to me. But Khabib actually probably sees literally fire at, on the grill that Alex is using to cook. So, that's probably where it got from. Personally, I feel that your second fight with Alex is one of the most criminally underrated fights of all time. Alex, oh, right here. Um, yeah. I'm curious, what's your level of concern of Max Holloway's power going into these fights? How much of a focus do you put on that in camp? Power. Well, you know, let's be real, he's more of a volume uh, fighter, you know, uh, so, uh, you know, I don't think uh, power is something, like obviously technique and all that is uh, speed and all, all that's good, like obviously you can, uh, yeah, that's something that I'm not too worried about, you know, I'm a pretty powerful dude, uh, obviously uh, he started off strong in that last one, so you know, I'm going to have to not let him start off strong this time and uh, not let him land uh, these types of shots, but at the same time, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm ready for, for whatever comes, but I mean, you know, I don't think power is a real, a real issue, I think it's a, that volume, that pace he's going to bring, is always going to be something that you need, and that, that chess match that we're going to have, that's something that I obviously got my, my eye on, not the power. And on the flip side, I th he has the most fights ever in UFC history without ever being knocked down. Mm -hmm. I think it's 26. Um, is that something you've thought about wanting to accomplish? And I guess what would it mean for you to end that streak? Man, like that, that'd be incredible, right? Like if you could sit there, it's a legendary chin that, that he has. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's incredible. You know, I've always said that you don't want to be known for your, your granite chin. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it is legendary at the moment. And for me, if I could uh, take that chin and, and put him out, you know, that really is setting a statement because no one's done that. And, um, but again, like, you know, he obviously takes damage. I have touched on the fact that, you know, can't hold up forever. But let's see if it holds up uh, this far. Because I know I'm going to land. I'm going to land big. I'm going to be uh, definitely uh, coming forward and, and landing some big shots. So let's see if that uh, legendary chin uh, holds up. I'm just the... Uh you know, what you were able to learn from the first fight, what he was able to learn from the first fight, and vice versa. I know you like to separate yourself from the sport a little bit, but have you gone back recently and watched that second fight? And if so, what stands out to you about it? Uh, not recently, but I did, I did watch it. I, I sat with my team and we watched it together and we just broke down, you know. It was two different guys, you know, and we, you saw two guys in there, a girl from the first fight, and then you saw two guys in there grow during the fight, you know, which is pretty good, you know, when you're at this level, you're high, at this high level, that's what you got to do to separate yourself from the pack. What's the biggest difference between the Holloway now versus the first or the second Hol uh, Volkanovski fight? I'd whoop both of their asses, uh, you know, like plain and simple, you know, you get better, you need to get better in this game. If you stay the same, you do the same stuff, then you're not going to grow in anything you do, you know, even what you guys do, you know, so I'm way better, I feel better, I feel great. 
I look great. I, I just can't wait to go out there and do it. Yeah, and it's only been the one loss. Do you remember what it feels like to taste defeat, and how much does that resonate you and motivate you uh, in each fight? Yeah, yeah, you're always going to remember it. You know what I mean? There's a, you're going to remember, man, I'm like, a, I, don't, I don't need to learn from losses. That's one thing that I've uh, made clear, you know what I mean? Even in a, in a good performance, even when you're winning, uh, there's still a lot you can take out of uh, them, you know? Obviously, you do learn a lot from your losses, but you learn a lot from your wins too. And, uh, you know, that's something that, you know, that, that, that I've, always, uh, I've always said, and that's just how I am. But obviously, I still, still feel that, and, you know, just losing is not an option in my mind. You know, my, you know, I refuse to lose. I've always said it, you know, uh, well before I was in the UFC, refuse to lose. So that's something that... Um, it's a, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not thinking about oh, what it feels like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm thinking about winning and doing what I need to do. But, uh, you know, obviously the drive to not lose is, is always going to be there because I'm a competitor. A lot of fans are saying that whoever wins this fight will determine who the greatest featherweight of all time is. Do you also see it that way? Uh, not at all. Not at all. You know, a lot of fans, a lot of people are saying it. And I'm, the, do we forget the man Jose Aldo? <laughs> the man got eight title fights. I got five title, uh, eight title wins actually. I have five title wins, and um, until somebody can beat his records as a champion, you know, with the eight title, with the eight title wins, then they can consider themselves the goat in featherweight, you know. So, I got five to be here against Alex to get my sixth title win. That's just a cherry on top, man. With fans and everything, it's it's gonna be amazing. Alex, back here to your left. Yeah. Oh yeah. How's it going, champ? Hey. When Max, when Max was in here earlier, we asked what that what a win over you would mean to him, and he says it's a legacy fight. This is a legacy fight for him. What would a win over Max do for you? Do you feel the same way? Like this, this is a legacy fight, or do you think because you already have two wins over him, this just closes the book altogether on this, this oh, rivalry? Mate, this is still a legacy fight, 100%. You know what I mean? He showed that he's still the number one guy. People are saying he's gotten better. You know what I mean? So. Uh, it's, uh, this is definitely a legacy fight. That's why we wanted this fight too. Like if I felt like this wouldn't put me in a better position moving forward, well, you wouldn't take it, but it does. You all want to see it, right? Everyone wants to see the trilogy. So that's a, that's a legacy fight. People want to see it. So uh, I, 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 was, I was open to it. I, I want it as well. So if that's going to move me forward, let's do it. Do you feel like your second fight with Max doesn't get the credit it deserves because there's all, there's, there's all sorts of controversy about how it was scored and stuff that people actually forgot how great that fight actually was? Well, yeah, obviously people are going to miss the, that chess match that was happening, the adjustments he made in between the fights, the adjustments I made mid-fight and all that type of stuff was it's pretty incredible. You know, you know what I mean? It's uh, very impressive, but you know, that, that sometimes uh, will be missed when, uh, you, when you have close fights.